Good morning. So I thought, um, because the book, the book I'm going to review is about a woman in her 40s um, and her sexuality, I, um, or her sexual exploration, I thought I would do it while I'm putting my makeup on as I'm a woman in her mid to late 40s. Um, going through the menopause um, and sort of, I don't know, I guess in your late 40s you kind of wonder are you still attractive? Will people still find you attractive? So it was quite timely that I read a book by um, an author called, me, called Monique Roffey. Her fiction has been shortlisted for the Orange Prize, but this is actually a memoir called With the Kisses of His Mouth. <coughs> so foundation hides a multitude of sins. Not wrinkles, unfortunately, but blemishes. I always wear foundation. So with the kiss of my mouth, it's basically charts the sexual adventure of Monique Roffey following the breakup of a long-term relationship that she had with another author. Um, and she says right up early on in the memoir that though she um, loved, was very much in love with this man, she didn't find him sexually attractive. And so theirs was a mar uh, marriage, a partnership um, that initially was very loving, um, but became arid, I suppose, without sex. Because she says she never really found him attractive. Um, the relationship comes to a um, shocking end when she receives in the um, post emails that um, his ex-lover and him wrote to each other and it's a very hurtful thing to receive. You imagine, she calls it a letter bomb, you imagine um, receiving something like that in the post. She particularly points out that um, her partner says he's only with her because of his career because they're both writers and they end up working together running the Arvon Centre which is a sort of writer's retreat where people come to um, talk about writing, have a go at writing, listen to um, published writers. So the novel sort of opens with um, her reeling from, or the memoir opens with her reeling from this letter bomb, and, and she leaves him immediately. Now she admits that the relationship was really on its last legs anyway, but I think she feels deeply betrayed, um, not so much maybe by him sleeping with somebody else, because she wasn't sleeping with him, um, but more I think by the things that he said about her in their emails, that he was only with her for her career. So she's very, very hurt, um, heartbroken. She, um, as a result of this, she begins to, well I think as a reaction to the lack of um, sex in her relationship, I think she begins to think about her own sexuality um, in terms of, um, is she a sexual being? What kind of sex does she like? What are her fantasies? And this sets her off on like a sort of a sexual odyssey. She starts on Craigslist, a bit of a strange place to start, I would, I would suggest, but um, she starts on Craigslist and ends up in a number of kind of hookups with men who really are on Craigslist for sexual experiences rather than relationships. Um, and she has a number of sort of one night stand type occurrences. She meets some really dodgy men on Craigslist. So I'm just putting some, um, I don't know what it is. It's like a blusher, but it kind of defines your cheeks. Um, anyway, so she meets some dodgy men on Craigslist, but she also meets some men who are, who seem to be really at ease with their sexuality. Um, and who seem to make her feel good about her own sexuality. And she does a lot of reading on this one, and this is an academic, this is someone who's very academic, who's used to learning about the world through books. So she also starts doing a lot of reading, and she ends up reading about tantric sex, um, and she reads about um, something called an ethical slut. So it's the idea that, you know, men and women should be free to have sexual relationships with um, other people, but, and it, and it for not to have to be a relationship, um, but, being an ethical slut means not not lying to people, not pretending you're falling in love with them, um, 
not pretending there's a long-term relationship going to come out of this but being very conscious about what you're doing and being very honest and open and upfront um, so she begins to take on this term for herself she sees herself as an ethical slut um, she carries on meeting men on Craigslist but she also begins to get involved in the tantric world and she goes on a, on a number of retreats um, and meets other people that are involved in tantric sex and she talks about tantric sex um, as a way of um, discovering her sexuality and being open to new experiences you know and there are some group sex scenes in there there are scenes of women um, pleasuring women she basically experiments with everything um, throughout this time she also at one point ends up in the south of France um, on um, kind of a swingers holiday in a particularly famous resort in the south of France which I can't remember the name of so I've just got to focus on this for a second so to me I mean the, the, the memoir is quite long it's about 500 pages long so it's a, it's a big old read I've read some reviews of um, this memoir and it, it seems that the audiences are very split they either really liked it because they thought she was brave exploring female sexuality um, and being very open and honest about what she's tried and um, sharing her sexual fantasies and then there's other reviews that just find the whole thing just a bit irritating um, because all the way through the memoir while she's on this sexual odyssey she's also trying to recover from the end of her relationship and a lot of reviewers have said but your relationship was on its way out anyway so why is it taking you so long to recover because she's, she's so broken hearted still two or three years later um, and I think it's annoyed some people um, as if she's kind of wringing out the grief, um, not letting go. Personally, I didn't see it that way. I, th I don't think you can um, judge how other people manage breakups. Um, just because she wasn't having sex with this man doesn't mean to say she didn't love this man. But what it does do is it sets her on an exploration as to why she's so heartbroken, why she can't get over this guy, um, when in fact the relationship didn't fulfil all her needs. Um, and so the novel explores things like can you have loving fulfilling relationships without sex um, and she does argue that many people particularly in their middle age are in relationships that are sexless but they would still call them successful relationships um, she also examines her own childhood um, and particularly focuses on her very distant father um, and she kind of comes to the Freudian conclusion that the reason that she's struggling so hard with the breakup of this relationship um, is because um, basically the partner that she ended up with was a substitute father figure so when their relationship breaks up it's like she's being abandoned by her father all over again again <clears throat> I don't know whether that's the right interpretation I mean it's it's her personal experience it's her way of making sense and if that helps her get over the, uh, the, the breakup then that's great where I struggled with the memoir, I mean, I enjoyed it, and I would even say some of the scenes are quite erotic. Some of the scenes are turned me off completely, um, and I think that depends on your own um, sexuality, your own experiences, and, and it depends on your own sexual fantasies. But, yes, yeah, some of the scenes are quite erotic, and in some of the um, writing about the sex, I was learning things about sex as well, and also about myself. But where I struggle with the memoir is, to me, what doesn't happen is she doesn't seem to reflect on the fact that um, she was in a relationship for 10 years that had no sex in it and then she spends the next three or four years having lots and lots of sex but she doesn't seem to make the link between the arid dry relationship she was in and why she's chosen um, this moment to explore her sexuality and I think there is more in it than that so to me it's almost two separate stories you've got the story of the breakup I've just forgot what I'm doing now. You've got the story of the breakup and how she recovers from her broken heart. And then you've got the story of her sexual odyssey or sexual adventure. And I feel that the author doesn't really doesn't really think about how the two are related to each other. She almost treats them as separate things. And that's to me why the memoir doesn't quite work, because it's almost like um two different stories. One is about the breakup and one is about um, the sexual odyssey. So, would I recommend this novel to other people? 
Um, I think if you're um, a bit prudish and only think sex should happen within a committed monogamous relationship, I don't think you'll enjoy this memoir. Um, if you're someone that's questioning the link between sex and love and lust, um, and someone that's potentially a little bit older like me, a woman in her 40s, you might actually really enjoy the memoir because it might help you think about your own sexuality and what it is you want from your relationships. Um, or if you're someone's experienced a breakup and are struggling to, to cope with the aftermath of that, then again, I think you might find this memoir um, relatable. You might relate to it. I mean, I certainly related to Monique Ruffrey in terms of age and in terms of exploring sexuality because I agree with her. I think when I was growing up, um, certainly in the in the 80s and, and 90s, I didn't really know much about sex. I didn't really understand um, my own body or what it was that I liked or didn't like. And I think as I've got older, I've begun to um, understand my body more, understand what I like and what I don't like. So for me, I found it pretty interesting. I know why my friend recommended it to me. Um, and I know why she knew I would find it interesting as well um, because of some of the conversations we've had in the past about relationships and sex. Um, I do think it was a very brave thing um, to publish. I don't think I would want to write so candidly about um, having sex. I think I would. <laughs> I'd be too embarrassed. So I think she's very brave. And I also wonder, and I haven't looked this up, but I wonder how many books out there are there about women's sexuality and women enjoying sex and women you know seeking sexual experiences outside of relationships so from that point of view I think you know good on Monique um, for having the guts to do that and to put it out there but it was interesting when I was doing a lot of research for this novel I noticed and, and um, the memoir was published in 2011 by the way I noticed that she's recently published a novel or a novella called The Tryst um, which is a piece of fiction which looks at a couple in their 40s who are in a um, sexless relationship um, and then a woman comes along who is very sexual and she kind of gets into the middle of this relationship and, and reading Monique's take on the novel that she's written in a sense Monique is, the bo is both female characters she's the sexless female character and she's the highly sexual female character. So I think the tryst potentially um, is the culmination of her experiences, the breakup and the writing of the memoir and the sexual adventure that she was on. I get the sense that the tryst has probably brought all this together and in some ways potentially I think the tryst I might find more interesting and enjoyable because I think the memoir was written very much like a stream of consciousness um, it was written in the moment, it was written without a necessarily a perspective, a, a stepping back. And I get the sense the tryst is the thing that's done that. So I am planning on um, um, reading the tryst to see if my hunch is right, that the tryst actually does the thing that I didn't think the memoir did, which is to try and understand or explore um, the link between this dry and arid relationship and then this sudden, sudden sexual awakening. Um, in some ways, I wonder if Monique was exploring whether <clears throat> the lack of sex in her relationship was because she doesn't really like sex or whether it's because she really didn't fancy um, the man that she was with because the love for him, she had for him, was not an erotic love but a kind of parental um, child-parent love. I predicted that um, with The Kisses of His Mouth by Monique Roffey would be a five-star review. Um, I did, I'll, put, I'll put a link to that. Um, five star review down below. I'm actually not going to give this novel any stars, this memoir any stars at all. I think I could easily justify one star, two star, three star, four star, five star. And I, I actually I think it's kind of irrelevant what I think of it in terms of stars. Um, because I think the memoir is very personal, I think it's very brave. Um, I think it, it was a form of therapy for her to write out the breakup and write out what she did next. I think the memoir probably allowed her to place her feelings um, into a wider context, try and understand herself in relation to her childhood experiences as well as her adult experiences. Um, and therefore, I think it depends on how you approach the novel, what your experiences are as to how you will rate the novel um, and how much you will get from it. 
Um, I didn't really connect with her lifestyle because she has a very nomadic lifestyle and she doesn't have children and of course I have children um, and I have been married to the same person for 25 years so I didn't connect so much with her way of living and her way of being. She tended to move around a lot and stay with people and live in spare rooms so I didn't connect with her on that level but again if you're someone that lives that kind of lifestyle or likes travelling then I think you'll get different things from the memoir than I did. Um, so I think this memoir, what you feel about it, will depend very much on you. And so I'm not going to rate it but I would um, suggest if you're curious about female sexuality, if you want to understand your, own, understand your own sexuality more then I think you might enjoy this memoir. Having said that, it might be that the novel The Tryst um, might be something you'd even enjoy even more because I've got, as I say, I get the feeling this is where she's processed everything and we now have a co coherent novella rather than a 500 page memoir that probably does the same thing as the memoir but maybe in a more creative way. Thank you for watching this rather strange review. It's a bit of an odd book to review and I felt it a bit easier whilst doing my makeup to talk about it because actually it does cover some um, areas that are potentially quite embarrassing. So thanks for watching. I'll be back again soon. Bye.